Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about product recommendations. I'm going to show how IBM Digital Analytics is integrated with WebSur Commerce. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and launch the site with the site preview. And we're going to look and see where the um, digital analytics recommendations are, are going to be placed on the site. So let's go ahead and show the page information. Now we can see uh, all of the different e-spots are outlined um, and we have the uh, digital analytics recommendations down here at the bottom. So these are actually being served up from digital analytics. And now I want to understand, you know, why, why those? Why those items? So let's go ahead and look at the rule. So inside of WebSir uh, Commerce Management Center, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and search for home because that's what I named all of my web activities for the home page. And you can see here we have home page intelligent offer. So we have the eSpot that it's on, which is the home intelligent offer. And I also created a zone ID called home Z1 that is registered in Core Metrics, and that tells Core Metrics, you know, what rules to go ahead and execute uh, within the system. So let's go ahead and launch Core Metrics. And we get sent right into the dashboard, but I'm actually going to go over to recommendations. So we, we go right into uh, the zone performance, and but what I want to do is I want to go in and figure out how this zone is is calculated. So let's go ahead and go to the zones tab. You can see I have um, these five zones set up for my Aurora eSight. And what I want to look at is Home Z1, which is the zone that I've configured for my homepage. And you can see here that I have a recommendation plan called home page. We'll get to that in a minute. And it's going to return um, a number of four recommendations. And I've also checked off where I want to exclude visitors' prior purchases and visitors' carded products. So those will be excluded from, from the offer. So let's go look at the recommendation plan called home page. So the recommendation plans allow you to configure at a high level, you know, what you're going to expect and what offers you're going to return under different conditions. So it's kind of like a mediation layer. And you can see here what I've done is I'm going to specify a category ID and then I'm going to go ahead and extend the home page catalog entry recommendation. And the fallback is if nothing is returned from, from that offer, go ahead and look and see um, what the last carded products are and then go ahead and do a product recommendation. So the last carded products, I may have bought some sunglasses and from there I'm going to execute the product page recommendation offer and we're going to we're going to go into that in a second because that's very important. So let's go ahead and look at the offers. So the offers, let's start with the home page. So this is what happens if, if something is returned. This is the rule that's essentially going to execute. So what I've done is I just set up a very, very basic rule saying, hey, I want the top seller ranking items for quantity sold. I could have picked item revenue, uh, number of views, or I could even done a custom where I can weigh um, the percentages of the returned items based on item revenue, quantity sold, or number of views. And I can also go ahead and uh, update the, the update frequency. I want this done daily, weekly, monthly, and also determine what the data analysis time period is. Seven days is what I have it configured for right now. So once again, very, very basic rule. I'm going to change this back to uh, quantity sold. And then if this doesn't return any products, remember what I said, we're going to default to the product page recommendations. And the product page recommendation is, is a cross-sell um, offer. So this means it's going to analyze either uh, the, a product page that you're on or products in your cart, as an example. So here, I'm going to say, hey, all active products, I could have picked from a subset of products, like you know the, the top 
you know, 100 products sold or a particular category or even a list of products. And the interesting thing about this cross-sell functionality is I can actually control the algorithm. So you can see here, it's pretty much basic setup to 50% across these uh, four metrics, which probably doesn't really make sense. So what I really want to do is I want to say, hey, anybody who viewed this product or bought this product, I want a higher value. So this particular metric here, I'm going to bump down, which is those who viewed this also viewed these pro uh, other products. And then this one here, those who viewed the current product bought these products. So I'm going to bump that up a little bit. We'll go, we'll go 70 or somewhere around there. And also, I want to bump up those who bought this product also bought these other products. So we'll make those two even. And then last one, those who abandoned that product bought these products. I may want to keep that the same because, you know, if they are looking at a particular product that gets abandoned a lot, you might want to offer some other products that people purchased instead. So I can go ahead and save that. And that's it. So, you know, I, I kind of went over the different rules in the system. Uh, the integration with Webster Commerce is very basic. You just simply drop the intelligent offer recommendation, which will be renamed uh, in the next feature pack. I'm using an older feature pack of Webster Commerce. And you just simply supply the zone ID. It really couldn't get any easier than that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.